Hi, my name is Dr. Erin Nadell and I'm a community activist based here in Moffide, Manchester. Usually the question, what do I do? Sometimes I think it's like, what don't I do? And there's quite a lot that I do, but in particular, a lot of my work is around peace and conflict resolution, um, striving for social justice, and community cohesion, you know, bringing different people together, and um, bringing different communities, different organizations, different grassroots individuals and groups, bringing them together to work together in a completely different way from what they normally would. Because I think in doing that, that entails people to understand each other and to be able to coexist together. And a lot of my work has been around anti-gun and gang crime, trying to rid our streets of Manchester of the gun crime and the gang crime, which is quite prevalent. And um, in doing so, you know, we found that we've had to really bring people together to understand each other and what their needs and what their wants are. It's not something that I said, yes, I'm going to set out to be a community activist. It was through an accident, and I literally mean through an actual accident, where a friend of mine was shot 12 times in front of me, in front of me and my husband, um, one evening when we went out for a party, and um, he was shot in the doorway. And it was that night that gun crime became a part of our lives, and more so, you know, part of my life. Because otherwise, gun crime, I read about it in the papers, I saw it on TV, and I always felt that, well, actually, that happened to those people. It didn't happen to people like myself. But that evening, my friend was shot 12 times. I found myself um, arguing uh, with the shooters, trying to stop them from, you know, putting more bullets in him. In them, in him. I found myself, I was the one that called 999. Um, I found myself having to try and administer first aid to bullet wounds, which you know I've never had to do. My husband has never had to do. There was a whole host of things that happened that evening. And um, even when emergency services eventually arrived, 45 minutes later, um, police started to ask people what they'd seen. And we were in a house party that was full of people. But the only people that saw something that night was myself and my husband. Everybody else turned deaf, dumb and blind. And that's when I realized at that moment that the wall of silence that people talk about, it's real. It does exist, the wall of silence, because nobody wanted to speak to the police. We were warned by our own peers not to speak to the police, that we don't speak to the police around here. Um, we had gunshots fired outside our house as a warning that we shouldn't speak to the police. One of my sons or two of them actually were accosted at gunpoint on the street warning them to warn their mother and myself to stop speaking to the police and there's a whole host like i said there's a whole host of things that happened and whilst it terrified us at the same time you know i felt no we have to stand up for justice because something really bad happened that night and i wasn't going to keep silent about it so um after a couple of years of working on the ground at grassroots level, I remember when somebody wanted to offer us some money you know, to do the work we did, the reach out work we were doing. But we didn't have an organization, we didn't have a bank account. So there were a couple of us, I think it was about six of us that came together and we formed um, a charity known as Charisma. And Charisma is actually an acronym and it stands for Community Alliance for Renewal in a South Manchester area. Because one of the things we wanted to do was bring all sides together because back then notoriously there was the two sides the moth side gang and the long side gang but we felt south manchester we want to bring everybody together to work as one so we set up charisma like i said that stands for community alliance for renewal in a south manchester area what did we do we used to have a strap line then which was about um giving young people life chances so it was about working with young people going into the school um not necessarily preaching to them, but talking with them, working with them, and, and trying, also as adults, trying to understand why there was a fascination around gun crime and gang crime. And then also trying to get young people to understand that, you know, in life you need to have what is called delayed gratification. There's no such thing as get rich quick. You know, you have to work hard now to reap the benefits in the future. And we did a lot of work with young people in schools, youth groups. We did a lot of work with the key stakeholders of our communities. 
For myself, identity is very, very important. I do describe myself as a Nigerian born in Britain. I'm, I am a British citizen, but I'm of Nigerian parentage. And I always say I'm a Nigerian born in Britain. If I was born in China, I'd still be a Nigerian born in China. So for me, I think that is very important to me. It's, in, it's an important part of my heritage. And therefore, I, I talk about it a lot. I dress in my national attire a lot. And uh, when people do question me, because I do have people that do question you know, my attire, that why is it necessary? Absolutely, it is necessary because it's who I am. It's part of who I am. And that's what makes me, me. And I don't want to strive to be anybody else. I want to strive to be me. And I would like to know that I am a role model for my own daughter, that she wants to be like me, not like anybody else, like me. And I think identity really is important for everybody and anybody to know your roots, know where your heritage is from, know where you started from, because then that helps you to actually get on in the present and actually move on to the future when you know who and what you are and your purpose. I also chair here in Manchester, I chair the Nigerian Women's Group Manchester, which again is a, is a, you know, it's a great position to have. I try my best to encourage um, my women uh, of my group to actually work outside of their comfort zone, to work with other organizations, and to actually understand who they are, what country is they're from, and some of the problems that we have in our country, which is actually now stemming over here in the UK, here in Manchester. Some of those issues could be nice time. Uh, a big one is modern day slavery. And to try and understand what does modern day slavery actually mean for us here in Manchester as Nigerians? What does it actually mean? Um, are we perpetrators of it? And we don't know that we are, which I'm sure, well, I do know some of us are perpetrators of it, but we don't actually see it as modern day slavery. So let's try and understand why is that label being attached to us? Rather than us refuting it and saying, oh, that's not me. Well, actually, it probably is you. But why is it you? Let's understand that. So through my women's work, we do a lot of awareness training. We do a lot of awareness workshops. And, we, you know, I'm a person, and they know me now, that through my group, we dare to talk about certain subjects that are probably known as taboo. So we would talk about the LGBT community. Who are they? What does that mean? Do we have Nigerian members of the LGBT community? And if we do, why do we? Let's try and understand what, you know, what does that mean? What does LGBT mean? Modern day slavery, like I said, what does that mean? And religion, you know, what does being a Muslim mean? What does being a Christian mean or a Catholic? What does that mean for Nigerians? And how do we play that out here in the UK? There's lots of other things I could go into, but that's just a small part of my work, which I think it's really, again, it's really important to understand when it comes to identity, understand who we are and why we're here as well. Whilst we're proudly British, we always will be Nigerian. So that is something we need to hold on to. I have a lot of accolades and um, for the work that I've been doing. And I must say, I have not done the work in order to get the accolades. The accolades have just come. And I think it's been a case of sometimes the work that you're doing, you're so you know, close to the work, you don't actually see the good that you are imparting on people. So I do have an honorary doctorate from Salford University. I do have an MBE, which was given to me by Her Majesty. And that MBE was for voluntary services to my community. I am also a Deputy Lieutenant for the County of Greater Manchester, which in a sentence means I represent Her Majesty the Queen outside of London. I'm one of the Lord Lieutenant Deputies. One of the brilliant things I get to do is citizenship ceremonies and you know, swear people in when they become British citizens, as well as you know attending other events and functions on behalf of her, um, the Lord Lieutenant and on behalf of Her Majesty. And I have lots of other you know accolades, um, citizenship, citizen of the year. Um, I'm currently a, a finalist in the first ever English Women's Awards. Uh, which will be taking place here in Manchester. Uh, I've been recognised as one of the 50 most influential women in Manchester and one of the top 100 most inspiring women here in Manchester. I'm also listed as one of the 250 most influential people here in Manchester through my community work. 
So um, I've also been recognised by uh, the Nigerian Embassy as well as one of the top 100 Nigerians that be doing something active. Um, I think that was in 2014-15 here in um, Manchester. It's really good to um, be recognised for the work that you're doing because like I said, most of the time the work you do, you don't realise that there are people watching you and people that appreciate. And I think one of the biggest successes I would say is actually having a statue of myself, a bust statue of myself, which is made out of 50 recycled guns and actually sits in Manchester Town Hall. And it's the first female statue to go into the Town Hall in 150 years. And guess what? I say that's a new paradigm in history. One, I'm a woman, so it's the first female statue in 150 years. I'm a black African woman. And I think third and finally, and most importantly, I'm still alive. Normally you get these statues when you've, you've, you know, you've gone above or below and probably a hundred years after you've existed. But you know, I'm still alive and I think um, that's a great accolade to have a statue of yourself in Manchester Town Hall. It's absolutely fantastic. First of all, I think it's very important that they do because we're here and we're here to stay. A lot of people say, you know, they're going to go back, they're going to go back. They never go back. They go on holiday, but they don't, never go back, you know, to live. We're bringing up our children in this society. Some of us now have grandchildren here. And I think it's really important for us to get involved in citizenship and be a positive citizen here in Manchester or even in the UK because this is our city as well. This is our country as well. We are here. We built this city or at least our forefathers and foremothers, they built this city. They um, set roads, cleared roads that we should be able to pass on those roads smoothly. And I think we should never forget what has gone on in the past. However, it is important for us to actually keep carrying the banner, carry the banner high, get involved in local citizenship matters because those matters and those issues, they surely and will affect us. People should vote, for example, because you hear a lot of people complaining about, you know, government and political things, but they don't vote. You know, for me, one of my mantras is, if you want to see change, you've got to be part of the change. You've got to be in it to win it. So people need to get involved locally. People need to get involved for the betterment, not only of themselves, but it's for the betterment of the generations to come. That is why we should get involved in society. That is why we should get involved in citizenship because we are citizens here and it is important that we too, our voices are heard. And like I said, it's not about you, it's about the generations to come, that they have a decent city or country to live in. Women, you need to shine. You need to come to the forefront. You need to make sure your voices are heard. You need to make sure you're recognised for what it is you are doing. We have many different roles as women and basically it's just the way it is. But there's nothing that a woman, a man can do that a woman can't do better. And that's something that my father always used to tell me. And so that's why I've gone ahead and tried my best to do whatever it is I've set my mind to do. And I think as women, we should do that as well. So women, I think we are, the, not I think, I know and you know, we are the backbone of the family, of the family unit. You know, there is that good old saying that, you know, you teach a woman or you train a woman in whatever and, you know, you're actually educating a whole village. That is so true because women, we are the backbone of society, not only of the family, we are the backbone of society. Stand up for who you are, stand tall, you know, remember your sisters. And I think one thing that is really important as sisters, as women, we should learn to and continue to uphold our sisters uphold them high and be proud of our sisters. Always talk proudly of our sisters, of women. I think my advice to young people, especially young people that get caught up in gun and gang crime and more so now knife crime, I think my advice to them would be think, stop, think and listen. You know, listen to that inner voice. Because carrying a knife, you may say you're carrying it for protection, but nine times out of ten, either you'll use it and use it to somebody else's detriment or to your own, and without actually wanting to maim or kill somebody. 
So the best thing to do is not carry it in the first place. Young people, especially in this country and especially Nigerians who have come to this country or whose parents are still preaching to you, there is a whole host of opportunities out there. Not only in the neighborhood that you live, not only in the city, but in this whole country. There's a whole host of opportunities. Do not throw away your opportunities in life. Your life has just begun. You've got a long way to go. And you know what? Life is absolutely fantastic. There's a lot of people you can ask questions. There's a lot of mentors, a lot of people you can ask advice. If you feel you cannot ask the people within your home for advice or put questions to them, find somebody on the outside to ask those questions. Another adult, because we're always there to help. You know, we're always there to give advice. You might not like it all the time, but sometimes it's the home truth. Basically, I think what I would like to say to young people, delayed gratification. It is something that you have to strive for. Pick up the phone anytime you want. You can call my office if you want to. You can look me up, or ring my bell on Google. I am Googleable. So you can look me up on Google. You will find my email address, my website address, my contact phone numbers. If you want to talk or just send a message, we're always here. I'm here, my team were here, and we will answer those questions. We have, um, I mean, I'm the female, the, the head of the organization, but we have males as well who are more than willing to talk to other young men, to talk to other young women. So please don't hesitate to call us. Look us up on the internet, Charisma, or my name, Arinda Bell. You'll find all our contact details.